He is imaginative. I'll be doing the mm -hmm. he and the she. Okay, great. He is imaginative, creative, or a right brain thinker. Mm -hmm. uh, does my child get the vibe of people and situations, even total strangers? Mm -hmm. Uh, is she affected by crowds or noisy places? That's yes. a big one. Yeah, the whole energy, um, um, and, and this is where the whole mass culture of television, violence on TV, violence in movies, um, the mainstream entertainment affects these kids s over the top too much. It's just all the energy rushes in. Um, they feel it fully in their whole body and in their hearts, and it's just it can just be way too much. Well, there's I, I think there's another part to it. What's happening is they're using using up their adrenaline mm -hmm. in their body and creating an adrenaline problem, mm -hmm. and they're seeking those things that are going to give them that rush because they get addicted to mm -hmm. it. That's right. And the powers that be know that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so I think that. Under normal circumstances, what I've noticed um, about these children is that they feel the tones of your voice on them. Mm -hmm. It's not just the, 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 the sound of it, an intention in your voice. They actually can feel your voice on them, and mm -hmm. on their nervous mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. They're so sensitive to the elements around them. Mm -hmm. Um, Even things like in a house, if you had a lot of off-gassing from carpeting, or yes. there was a vibration in the road, all, yes. all of those, all of those things. We just have to find a way to communicate with them when they're so young. Um, does she sometimes say she's been to a place before, even though you know she hasn't? Mm -hmm. Does he have imaginary playmates? or say he hears voices. Mm -hmm. Does she have a deep knowledge of her ancestors and you're not sure how? Yes. Does my child say he sees ghosts? Does he experience noises, flashes of light, or other unexplainable occurrences? And, and these especially can be very difficult for the child to communicate if they're seeing like a little energy entity here and there's no words in our vocabulary really to talk about what those are like. When I was a child about three I had an entity in my bedroom that was just observing me mm -hmm. and it upset me so bad. Uh, I, I, I had no idea whether I was protected or not. Three, you don't know. Right. All you know is something that shouldn't be there is there. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a brother that we were uh, sharing a room, and both of I, both of us were affected, and he has no memory of it, mm -hmm. but it showed up when I got pregnant with my first child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was now an adult, <laughs> looking at there a physical a presence, yes. standing at yes. the foot of my bed, and just absolutely scared. Yeah, because it, I knew it was observing, but I didn't know from for what reason. Mm -hmm. You know. A lot of the old movies uh, from the maybe 20s or 30s or 40s, they have this idea of entity. Usually it's in an actor. An actor portrays the entity. But um, it's pretty similar to um, uh, this idea of someone else being there. I don't know. It's just interesting that that concept was so firmly developed even those decades ago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, moving along. Is my child deeply attracted to animals or have way with them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A lot of them have mm -hmm. an incredible ability a te a te uh, telepathy. with animals. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, does she feel an urge to put her hands on things to help or to heal? Mm -hmm. Can my child see auras? Mm -hmm. Does my child have especially vivid dreams? Does my child understand the teachings of Jesus, Buddha, or other holy ones and you aren't sure where they're getting this information. Right. Or if they're exposed to something, a spiritual teaching, it'll just be like, they're like, well, yeah, duh. They, <laughs> Mom. they just know. Yeah, they yeah. know it. Yeah. It's stunning, actually. Mm -hmm. It really is stunning to uh, hear sometimes the simplest thing be so profound that or, comes out of their mouth. Or they can even explain it better yeah. than, you can, than you can think about it, yes. The simplification. Yes. 
Um, how does one parent, that's a big one, mm -hmm. how does one parent a psychic child? Mm -hmm. With uh, humor, <laughs> humor and, um, no, it's, uh, it's really about giving kids space to have their gifts is, is kind of the pr approach I take. Yes, you can do training. There are some limited windows of time in which you can work with kids, but really around preteen and up, they may not want to work with you or be trained by you. Um, it's really just about providing um, support for what's happening. Okay. Um, I think uh, one of the places in that, that you wrote about this in your book. Mm -hmm. You said, ask for divine help. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that that's true. When you have a child that's that advanced, yes. that, and you may not have all of the abilities to understand, then there are those angels waiting for those instructions mm -hmm. for you to just ask them to come in and have assistance. Mm -hmm. But to think about handling this without getting any structure without getting any kind of understanding mm -hmm. uh, the child is then set up possibly to feel different to have low self-esteem mm -hmm. act out in negative ways because there's so many variables isn't there mm -hmm. yeah the parents the reason I wrote the book the parents need to educate themselves so that they can provide the framework yes for the child and um, it's not, you don't have to necessarily become psychic yourself in order to assist a psychic child. It's likely that, that those abilities will start to open for you if you delve into this study long enough. But um, to know how things work, to, um, to uh, counter the, what's shown in movies, which is not how things work at all, um, and to understand the subtlety of how uh, the divine and how entities present themselves so that exactly. when your child is experiencing yourself, experiencing something, you can, that's this, that's this, that's exactly. this, and you're educated so you can support. Well, I think it eliminates the fear for the parents so that, mm -hmm. you know, I was talking to a, a parent with a, a gifted child not long ago, and I told her that her ch she's having problems uh, parenting mm -hmm. this very advanced mm -hmm. child and I told her that uh, she needed to look at giving this child more expression for the decoration in his room mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and if he wants to put something up on the ceiling and and have it be more like a canopy let him have his let him have that energy mm -hmm. and also that he was picking up on her fear mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this was creating an anxiety for him and and bouncing back on her so she actually found herself sleeping a lot in her son's bedroom and not sleeping in her own room mm -hmm. so getting the child at a point where the child can see mommy daddy's not afraid of this and mm -hmm. I can mm -hmm. it encourages more of the child's communication also doesn't it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah um, I think that uh, that fear I don't know it seems like if you if you understand what to expect, the fear just goes away. Dissipates. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and then the other thing about if you understand what to expect, you also can see how you need to protect your child with yes. appropriate boundaries against some of the yucky, yucky stuff, not in the um, entity world, but in, in the earth world that, that will affect them badly and make it so that they, have a bad, they might have a bad experience around any of this. Um, the limits you set can really, really help your child out. Well, yeah. I, there has been a program on television um, with, uh, I think his name is Chip Cuffey. Oh, oh, maybe, uh, yeah. Psychic, psychic Children. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's on the Sci-Fi Channel. Sometimes it's on um, uh, 170 here in Portland. And I have been fascinated watching the different cases of these kids. The youngest, what I think was eight years old, but the advancement of their abilities mm -hmm. was so unbelievable. Every one of these things I've been watching, mm -hmm. I'm just in awe. The problem is, is that they're so advanced that they don't have any way to ground themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to stand up for themselves. In other words, they, they really need that education as to where they are empowered. Yes, yes. Because that's where it can get dangerous. If they don't have that empowerment and they go off and start 
when they're older, 12, mm -hmm, 13, mm -hmm. and starts playing with the dark arts, right. there's right. the risk. Yeah, and that is um, uh, quite tempting for that age group. That I call it, in the book, I call it the goth group. It's not, I, that just seemed a, a handy catch-all phrase to use, but um, there seems to be a fascination, especially now in the culture, with the Twilight movies and, and video games, well, all of it. It's encouraging that the darker side yeah, uh, and they don't understand symbols mm -hmm. and the power of symbols to be put mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on their body, whether it's a tattoo, whether it's a t-shirt, uh, whether it's um, uh, putting their hair through a process that kills their hair, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, putting a lot of metal on mm -hmm. uh, their body. Right, right. Um, when you see one of these children walking down the street, one of the common things that I've noticed about these very gifted children is that there seems to be a void. Mm -hmm. If they've gone in that direction, they're not happy. Mm -hmm. There's sort of a, a, a sadness mm -hmm. and a blankness in their eyes. And then mm -hmm. on top of that, if they start exploring the drugs, mm -hmm. um, they're really in trouble. They're, yeah. they're really vulnerable now. You know, I had a, um, a, a teen client who was heading very much to that direction, and um, her mother brought her, and uh, we did a lot of education and discussion. And then when this um, gal came back uh, a month or so later, yeah. she was completely uh, rosy-cheeked, wearing colorful clothing. Oh, it was just, did a it good was beautiful. Job. <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was like, ha, yeah. oh, whoosh. Black that is was, not the color to No, wear. not for, no, no. No. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to break down and read about the spiritual gifts for mm -hmm, all of us. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and anytime you want to jump mm -hmm, in, mm -hmm. uh, please do. Uh, Claire Sensitis, S E N T I E N C E. Claire Sentience? Si yes. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Claire Sentience, yes. When you, yeah. Uh, to me, that just is empathicness mm -hmm. that you're so sensitive that the child feels everything and yeah. is taking, taking it on. It's just feeling it all in the body. And I find most adults, that's almost the biggest uh, yes. psychic ability, this deep, deep knowing. Deep knowing. A deep knowing. Uh, clear audience, mm -hmm. which is a uh, psychic hearing, mm -hmm. and hearing via spirit guides, angels, or loved ones that have passed, mm -hmm. imaginary playmates, or hearing words as if they came through a radio, and they may even hear music. Yes, and I think uh, musically gifted kids, they'll talk about, uh, I just hearing hear the whole it. piece in my head. Exactly. And, and the, the key is to get the translation out. It comes in one uh, Whole piece. Kids who are great at writing and languages, they that's often where they cluster in the clear audience. You know, so. one time I was reading a client and this harp kept playing mm -hmm. and I saw the strings of this harp psychically playing and I'm going, you know, w this has so many implications right. and that it turns out that this person had musical abilities. Mm -hmm. And that they would have, they were going to be channeled if they were would apply themselves to whether it was writing lyrics mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. uh, picking up the piano and working with it. But all like through the whole entire session, this this harp was being played, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I was so amused. That's great. <laughs> well, yeah, it's symbolic plus the auditory clue, yeah. so you can't miss it. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's aren't great. Aren't you hearing it? No, yeah. they're, they're not hearing yeah. it, but yeah. yeah, it's over here. I'm hearing it. Yeah. Okay, clairvoyance, which is psychic seeing pictures in the head or movies in the mind, and they might see images or symbols. Yeah, and I want to talk a little bit about clairvoyance because this is where in, in the movies, um, you know, clairvoyance is depicted as, you know, smoke and mirrors and... <laughs> you know, explosions. It's and disgusting, really. <laughs> yes, and it really just happens in this small little little window in your mind, your mind's eye, your, th third, your third eye. eye. Um, you're picturing it, you're imagining it, you're uh, putting it there. These are all terms that I use for this place where we mm -hmm. we see things. Um, yeah, so it's I like think... It's like sitting for, in a movie theater. 